Hello everyone, this is Mike from Magmafire, and thank you for watching this video, which is the disassembly of the HP EliteBook 8770W. It's a professional workstation laptop, and uh, the whole point of this video is because I noticed that there aren't many videos on YouTube showing this particular laptop being disassembled, and I thought it'd be great to actually show that. So, um, I'm actually taking it apart uh, because I wanted to access the CPU and GPU because it needed new thermal paste and this particular laptop actually is my main editing computer believe it or not it's actually really fast and it gets the job done really well so I really want to uh, get in there get some new thermal paste on the CPU and the GPU reduce some of those temps and hopefully get better performance out of it which um, I am getting better performance out of it so it definitely worked out but anyway, um, right now, I'm going to start off. The very first thing is you flip the laptop over. You got to remove the, the battery. And then after you remove the battery, you need to take off the back panel. And there you'll be able to see the hard drive and your network card and, and a few other things. And one of the first things you want to do is get a, a Phillips screwdriver. And you want to... Uh, unscrew the hard drive so the first one I unscrew there is my secondary hard drive and then afterwards I'll uh, unscrew the primary hard drive which is actually under the express card reader so there's a uh, in my case there was one screw for the secondary hard drive it was kind of a custom thing I put in there um, and then there's actually supposed to be three and then for the primary there's also three screws uh, there's two towards the connector and one in the very front of the hard drive just to keep it all in place um, shouldn't have to require too much force into it, it's pretty easy, comes right out nothing special to it um, despite the fact that there's supposed to be some sort of anti-theft protection on my laptop I didn't have any issues when I took it out but as you can see here once you remove the screws you can actually just lift up the express card reader it actually has hinges so you can actually move it like that which is you know pretty convenient I think it's pretty clever how they designed this laptop um, I mean they, they basically fit a whole lot of stuff into a very thin platform obviously they made the laptop wider to you know kinda compensate for all of this so after I take that hard drive off, I'll move on to the, the next part here. Which, by the way, I'm actually saying all this afterwards. So this is a, a live recording of me uh, speaking about what I'm doing after the fact. Um, so the very next thing I did... Oh, well, I should have taken out the express card reader, but I actually took out the retaining screw for the CD-ROM drive oh actually no my mistake actually I'm taking out the the keyboard screws and then I take out the um, CD-ROM screw which by the way there's three keyboard screws I actually didn't show that I realized after but there's no point throwing that in the video um, they're actually labeled there's a little keyboard icon next to the screw anyway so uh, you know I go back to the express card reader there's a little ribbon cable there um, use a flathead to lift up the black connector and it's it just comes right out alright after I do that it took out the three screws for the keyboard it, it's a little hard it's a little tight in there because the keyboards flush but you want to try to pry it open from the top part because there's little um, tabs on the bottom of the keyboard be very careful there's a ribbon cable below that obviously for the keyboard and for the uh, little thumb mouse just make sure you disconnect those you would just lift up the little white connectors that's retaining them and it should just come right out I will say they are a pain to put back in though so just keep that in mind that you're gonna have a little trouble um, doing this you know doing the whole reverse of rebuilding the computer after you take it all apart um, also make sure that you take out the ribbon cable for the touch pads um, which I didn't exactly do yet I think I took out one for the top buttons 
But anyway, uh, I flipped the computer back. Um, you're not ready to take out the, the top panel yet. There's actually eight screws you have to take out. They use Torx. I actually didn't have a Torx screwdriver. I actually I had a flathead, and I made sure the flathead um, fit perfectly, you know, diagonally across, so I didn't strip the screw. Uh, I actually lucked out. I, I could not find the right Torx sides for the screws, but there's um, eight screws. Um, I think it was five on the bottom, if I remember correctly, and then there's three that's midway into the laptop and um, you'll see that here in the video Oh, yeah, and also at this point in the video I had to change the camera because the original camera I had for whatever reason when I stopped it and tried to re-record it it wouldn't go it was giving me some weird error so I just said you know forget it can't mess around with it right now I'm just gonna go ahead with the use my cell phone which unfortunately is 720p and not the greatest quality and it's entirely hard for me to <laughs> show you what I'm doing with one hand and using the other hand to turn the screw. I tried my best. Um, fortunately, you don't get a nice wide shot, but I, I try to try to show you, you know, where the screws are. Also, you can see I'm a noob here and I have my finger on the lens or part of the lens. Um, but they're they're pretty easy to be they're pretty easy to see. Um, I think they're marked M2 5mm or something like that and it actually says times 8 so you, can, you know there's 8 um, and if you ever get lost there's actually a service manual on HP's website which I will provide a link to in the description so you don't get lost I think HP's website was not the greatest for repair um, help I mean, they have videos to show you how to do some of the basic stuff, like put it in the memory, for example. But as far as actually taking it apart, it, I actually, good thing I have some know-how with this stuff, because I actually thought it was a little hard to just follow their instructions. They, they don't show too many diagrams, they just pretty much have it written out for you. Alright, so I took out the eight screws, as you can see, and... Um, there's actually now four screws that you have to take out from under the battery. They're small screws. So just make sure you don't mix them up. Uh, I, I, I'm, I have photographic memory, so I pretty much just put them in different piles, and I was good to go. But uh, you may want to be a little bit more organized. Maybe have a piece of paper labeled with boxes, and then put the screws in other boxes with the proper label. That's probably an easy way of organizing it. Um... So, still taking out the screws here, and then after I take out these screws, you will notice, if I can get that screw out, if you notice, there's actually two screws where the CD-ROM drive was. I don't, show, I don't do a great job of showing you there, but there's, there's two there. Oh, there you go, there's a better wide shot. And they're just as small as the, the battery, or what was under the battery, so... You know, try not to mix them up, but if you happen to mix them up, it's okay. They're the same size. So no big deal there. And, uh, you know, after you take those out, and after you take out those two screws, the four screws, and then the other eight screws, you should be able to remove the top cover. But before you do, and I almost didn't do this myself, make sure you take out the touchpad. There's ribbon cable for that. Once again, a pain in the butt to take out. So you take out those cables and you start to pry it with that little circular hole. You don't really, I don't know if you can really see that, but that circular hole is where you're supposed to really pry it from. It was actually kind of hard. And make sure you don't yank at it either because there's actually two more cables you need to worry about. Um, one's the power, one's for the power, which you can see right above the GPU heatsink. And then, oh, can't see it now, but there was one near the GPU heatsink, and then there was another over to the right side that was a little wider for the application buttons. But now you see me here um, taking out the screws for the CPU, which actually I should have um, removed the GPU screws first because you can't take out the CPU heatsink until the GPU's heatsink is out of the way. It, it, there's no wiggle room whatsoever. 
but unlike the instructions that HP give you, you can take out the GPU heatsink without needing to remove the um, LCD video cable. So I realized that and I just jumped right into um, trying to take out the GPU. Um, there's only two screws there for in the fan, one on the top, one on the bottom, and then just like the CPU, there's four screws for the uh, GPU. The only thing I would recommend is that you try to make sure that the you try to go in order. They're actually numbered. I, I try to do the you know one two diagonally left, and then the three four diagonally right. Just make sure you just stay in order. It's just in the same way reverse when you're putting it back on. Alright, so I did the screws there, and I need to put the camera down, that's why there's a cut there. But anyway, I got the CPU heatsink off, the GPU heatsink off, don't forget to take off that wire for the fan. And that's basically it. So, uh, there you go. That's how it looks like, disassembled.